Welcome to Worthington Home. I'm Chris. Did you ever want to go thrifting, but you're not quite sure where to start? Or are you an experienced thrifter and you're just looking for some new tips and trips to try? Either way, this video has something for you. My first tip is to be prepared. You can see in the trunk, I have some bags and some wrapping paper. I have a little um, crate and I have some other storage areas because you never know if Goodwill or other thrift stores is gonna provide you with boxes and wrapping for your breakables. So be prepared yourself just in case. We're headed into Savers because this is the closest store to my house, so it's a great place for me to show you some of my tips and tricks. So here we go. So my second tip is to really get the lay of the land. Take a peek around the thrift store that you're in, get a sense of where things are located, and then pick your course of action. So for me, I tend to like to go to the left. There's no right or wrong way to do this. I just like to start on my left-hand side. But as I said, it's really helpful to just take a minute, look around, figure out where everything is, where the cashiers, where are the home goods, where are the bags, where are the clothes, and that just helps you determine your course of action and figure out where are the crowds, if there are any, so you can kind of avoid getting jammed up into tight corners or places where there are a lot of shoppers. So starting off on my left, I'm looking at a little bit of furniture. This is a very pretty dresser. I like this piece a lot. The price on this is $499. That's crazy. I don't know if this is some kind of special brand. And I always take a really quick look through the book section. I don't typically spend a lot of time here. I love this book, The Light Between Oceans. Um, but I just look for anything old and interesting or anything that seems like it's going to be readily sellable. This set is really interesting and I did take a minute to take a look at the resale value in this set as well. And I found that the resale value just isn't really there. This isn't a first edition. You see 1948, if it had been a first edition, it would have had more value, but because it isn't, it's only worth about $6. So not worth it for me today. Now I'm just walking through the VHS and DVD sections. I don't have a lot of knowledge about resale in these areas. Um, there are some um, pieces that can be resold for good profit, but I just don't know enough to be able to make a move there. And now I am looking at the artwork. There's always a lot of artwork at Savers. So I wanna make sure I check it out pretty carefully. These are interesting pieces. They're reproductions of older prints. I'd say 60s or 70s, very heavy. That means they would be hard for me to ship. There's some religious artwork up above. It's actually very well done. This is a charming little print for $5.99. It's not too heavy. And this one is very sweet as well for $6.99. So those are some interesting contenders and I will put them in my cart for consideration. These panda pictures are also adorable. There's a set of them. So I will consider these as well. That brings me to my next tip, which is if you are considering an item, put it in your shopping cart. Just pick it up because if you don't, somebody else will and you will regret that you missed your opportunity. So much better to pop some things into your cart and later when you have a little bit of time, reflect and decide what you ultimately want to purchase. So now I'm going through um, what I consider to be the sort of smalls aisle. There's a lot of little figurines and things in this aisle. 
some decorative plates, mostly like wall plates. There's some other exceptions to the rule. This is a very pretty plate. And this is the floral section where you can find some vases and planters. This looks like Lennox to me. And it's in two pieces, which I wasn't expecting. I think these might be like wall pockets, but Savers is asking a lot for them. Cute little chicken. It's got some condition issues, especially on the comb. You can see there's some chipping in the paint. This little bowl is very interesting. It's got some kids on it and a wintry scene. It has some collectible potential. Here we are in the basket section. I always give this a quick look just in case there's something valuable, old, or interesting. This is an interesting piece, but has a condition issue. You see, it looks like it's missing some of its weaving there. The turkey is in better condition, but frankly, I liked the squirrel better. Always, always check the condition. This is a little holiday section. There can sometimes be some hidden gems in this um, on this aisle, so. I try not to go too, too fast here. There's some candles. It's like a skiing chalet. This little pumpkin container is interesting, but not old and very cheaply made in my opinion. And you can see I'm looking at the top of the shelves. I'm looking at the bottom of the shelves. And that is another important tip. Don't forget to look all the way up and look all the way down. We tend to focus on what's at eye level. And if you do that, you could miss a lot of really good items. So make sure you're looking up and down. And you can see here, I'm checking out the end caps. The end caps are where a lot of good things can be placed by customers who change their mind or by employees that just need a quick place to pop things. Now I'm looking at my favorite aisle, and that is the what I consider to be the china aisle. And that's where all of the china plates, all of the porcelain is, and that is what I love the best. So I always spend a lot of time in this aisle, and it's a little bit picked over in light tonight. So I'm not seeing a lot of good stuff. This is great, this is a reamer, and this looks like Vaseline glass that probably glows. $14.99 is a very high price for this piece. So I'm gonna have to comp this out on eBay. I have a feeling this isn't gonna be a good purchase for me as a reseller, but we'll check and make sure that's the case. This is a very pretty plate at $1.99. Not a super special brand. So I'm gonna put that back for now. This is some nice chunky dinerware, $7.99 for six pieces. It's interesting, but it looks very beaten up to me. I think this has had some hard use and I can see some little nicks and chips. And so I'd rather not get into that. I always take a lot of time in the mug section. This Starbucks mug looks like it's missing some kind of lid. So I'm gonna pass on that today. This mug that says Ma on it is kind of interesting for $2.99. It's in good condition and has some interesting illustrations on it. And again, you'll see me looking all the way up. You also wanna make sure you look behind things. You wanna make sure that nobody's trying to hide something that they're gonna come back for later. That happens quite a bit. So take your time and ideally it's great to go up an aisle in one direction and then go back through that aisle in the opposite direction and that will help you ensure that you're not missing anything. I'm checking this mug one more time to see if it's something I want to pick up for $2.99 but when I looked on eBay I saw that I would only get about $5 for it on average so not worth it for me as a reseller. 
is a pretty little mug. I like the graphics on this a lot. So that's something I'll have to think about. Okay, I'm taking a look through the glass aisle and clear glass is a tough seller. This ice bucket is interesting. I especially like that little loop detail on the lid. The little pull there is a little bit different. So I'm gonna pop that in the cart and think about it. There's no special marking on it, but I like the shape. I always look at the canisters. You never know if you might find something old and unusual. And this is another tip for you. That is don't rule out any particular section of the store. Look through every section, even if it's an area you don't normally collect, you never know if something's gonna jump out at you and capture your attention. So keep an open mind. You really never know what you're gonna find. Here we have the frame section. I'm pretty full up on frames right now. So unless there's something super unique, I probably won't pop on it. This is an interesting piece, this little sort of egg shaped container with like a Cupid kind of figure on the top. I don't know if it has any value. So again, my very important tip is when you're not sure, pop it in your cart, take it along with you so nobody else grabs it up and you can think about it later when you have a little bit of time. Here you'll see there's lots of like notebooks and office supplies. I don't usually find anything interesting in this aisle, but I always check it just to be sure. Now we're moving into the section of the store that has items that are in little bags, like little grouped items. Some people find fabulous things here. I did find some very nice vintage napkin rings this way, but you have to watch the condition. Like that little figurine had some clear chips on it. So as you go through, those are some nice uh, little like shower curtain rings, but you really want to check to make sure you're not getting anything damaged. Some old plastic outlet covers are interesting. These like little pumpkins could be cute for the fall. I happen to have a lot of those. There's some like little Christmas things. There's lots of cookie cutters in this area. I always tend to find them and I bought those before with good success. Here's an interesting big Tupperware container. I think this was used to transport cake. I'm not sure what the resale value is on this, so that will go in the cart. And here's another one very similar um, that will also go in the cart until I can think about it a little bit more and also do a little bit of research. Okay, I'm taking another loop around because I think it's very important to go up and down the aisles a few times. This like little sugar and creamer are interesting. I can't get a real sense of them from the markings. So I'm gonna put these in the cart again to think about and do a little bit of research on before I make any decisions. There's some interesting white milk glass. This is a very pretty painted plate. There's some nice pieces, some characters from Frozen. There's some nice pieces, but nothing that is jumping out at me for the purposes of resale. This is a little Mikasa platter. I already have this for sale for this coming up winter, which is why I can identify the piece. And mine is actually in the original box. It's a very pretty divided tray. Here is a section with silver and pewter. I've been burned on silver and pewter before. It's very prone to dings and damage that is hiding under tarnish. You can see right there, there's a little ding in that pewter piece, even though it's really pretty. So it's important to be very picky when you're looking at those kinds of things. Here's some dishware. This is beautiful, elegant depression glass, but $24.99. Um, the resale market in no way supports those kinds of prices. And even though there's two of those pieces, they're $24.99 each, not for the two. And to be honest, even if it was for the two, that price would still be too high for me. I like this little willow ware platter. 
no special marking on this. So I'll put that back. This is a lovely Fire King um, anchor hawking piece. However, despite that and the beautiful pink flowered pattern at $19.99, that's not resellable for me. That's a pretty little gravy boat and tray. It's Wedgwood, which is great, but $19.99 for the grave bo gravy boat and $16.99 for the tray that it goes on. That's borderline ridiculous. This is a very pretty cake plate with a little uh, cake plate server. And another one. I like this sort of mosaic patterned plate very much, but look at that crack. Do you see the cracks in that? So that is a no. The funny plate is very pretty, but roughly done and amateurish. And you can see that this was actually made by somebody, which is really interesting, but not for me. This is fabulous. This plate for $3.99. It is Lennox, which is fantastic. So I will for sure check the resale on this because this looks good to me. And you can see here, this sells really well on eBay. Yeah, nice prices. I should get somewhere around $30 for this, I think. So I actually grabbed a sweater off the rack to wrap my plate because by now my cart is getting full and I don't want to damage things before I even get them home. What do we have back here? Oh, another beautiful plate for $3.99. This is also Lennox, a different pattern, but it is beautiful. And I'm just looking at some of the glasses, some very pretty Christmas ones. Definitely some good ones. And it's important to keep an open mind when you're at Goodwill. You may not find things exactly when you want them. So if you find Christmas stuff in March, don't hesitate to pick that up. You may not find it in December or November when you want it. Keep an open mind. Another really good tip for you. You'll see I'm just checking those end caps again and again. It's especially important to do if employees are wheeling out bins of new things. That hasn't happened yet while I've been here, and it could be because I'm here in the evening. Um, some stores wheel things out all day long into the evening, and some only do that during the daytime hours. Uh, it's very quiet here tonight, so I think this is not a good bin rolling time. When's the best time to go to Goodwill? When those bins are rolling out. Um, and so if there is a store that has a good schedule for that, you can certainly ask the employees, but it seems to me that it's pretty random. What do we have here? Little Tupperware Jello Mold for $1.99. That is definitely intriguing to me. These plates are very interesting. This is Old Curiosity Shop, Charles Dickens-esque plates. $19.99 for two is not a good deal for my purposes, so that's a pass. These lusterware pots and pans are pretty. Uh, $19.99 is too high for me. Actually, they're not pots and pans, are they? They're like baking dishes. This one's a little cheaper, but that's because it has some cracks in it. So really nice, but they're a no. It's hard to walk away from stuff like that, but sometimes you just have to. Just seeing if there's anything else that might be set for a better price. There's a pumpkin pie plate. It's never a thrifting experience if I don't find a pie plate. And here are the pots and pans. Again, I'm never a snob in terms of ruling anything out or if anything looks jumbled or messy. I keep an open mind. There is nothing that I won't consider if I think it has good value for my own home or for resale purposes. So I look everything over with a good bit of care. Here's a bit of a furniture section. 
I like these old sleds, but they're not in good repair and they are a little bit pricey. If you're looking for old sleds, go to my father-in-law's store, What Not Shop in New Britain. He's got lots of them. They're in better condition and they are better priced. Here's a lamp section. I really like this pink lamp. I wouldn't dare try to ship it. $9.99 is not a bad price. So if I had a store, I would pick that up. And I always take a quick peek at the linens. You never know when you might find an amazing tablecloth or runner. And even the throw pillows are worth checking out. I have gotten throw pillows from Savers before. Now you can see I have found a space amongst the linens that is very quiet and there aren't a lot of people around so I can really go through my cart with a lot of care and make some really thoughtful decisions about what I'm taking up to the cashier. This is really a critical moment for me in the thrifting process because this is where I'm making those final decisions. So I'm checking out this lamp that I absolutely love for I mean, this vase for $4.49, but I need to make sure it has no tiny hairline cracks, no chips, no imperfections that are gonna cause me to bring it home and regret my decision. So I'm gonna look over everything with this kind of care. I had picked out this cute little duck, but you can see there's some damage to the foot. Um, this is a little studio pottery piece or a piece from some kind of a kit. The painting is pretty crude. It's not in great shape. That's a no. I checked the price on this little Cupid figure. It is not a good resale price. So that's a no. The duck is going back. And I'm going to continue to go through each item. I looked up the book that's in my cart and saw that I can only get about five or six dollars for for it on eBay. It's being sold for $3.99. That's not valuable, so that's coming back. This cute little Tupperware piece does not have good resale value, so that's going back. This pretty framed print has damage on the frame for $6.99. It's just not worth it for me, especially because I find that art is hard to sell on eBay. So this is really cute but this is also going back for me today. Like I said, this is a really hard part of the thrifting process for me. This piece is $5.99 and I really see no serious flaws with it. It's pretty light. I could ship this, I could even keep this. So this is looking like a good one to me. I'm putting back the other Tupperware piece for the same reason as the one for it, which is that it just doesn't have good enough resale value to be a piece for me, and I don't have need of it in my personal life. I double checked the value of this plate. It's excellent. There's definitely resale margins on this, and you can see I'm checking the condition with a lot of care. I don't want sad friends today. This milk glass vase is going back. Why is it going back? The resale value is just not there. Here I'm checking the reamer and you can see the market price does not support the price Savers is asking for it for resale. So goodbye to that piece. Um, hopefully somebody else will find it and love it. This ice bucket is going back. Interestingly, it would be valuable if it was white with red accents and not the other way around. This little dish has chips on the paint and for that reason, it's going back. This is a great piece. I'd love to snatch this for $14.99. It has to be in better shape than it is. So fun to see, but not a purchase. This Starbucks mug, however, has potential. Well, it's the next day and I made a rookie mistake. I didn't pick up the two panda prints that I really liked. Now I'm regretting it and I'm hoping they're still there. So I'm headed back to Savers. I should be doing about 10 other things, but like a goofball, I'm going back to Savers to see if the pandas are still there. So fingers crossed. It is a rainy, yucky day. I am ready for some sunshine. Is it spring yet?
Well, this is interesting. I got to Savers at like 9.40. I figured, I just assumed it opened at nine. It doesn't open until 10, and there is already a line of people waiting for the doors to open. Who knew Savers was such a hot spot early in the morning? Well, it's not early, early for me. I'm not a morning person. Okay, this is cracking me up. There are now 10 men in line for Savers and one child. And they are standing there like they're going to trample anyone who tries to get ahead of them. Now, bear in mind, I'm making fun of them. And they're probably looking at me talking to my phone in the car and going, look at that crazy lady here so early for Savers. What's her deal? I guess it's all in how you look at things. I just had to show you the glorious sight of the bins having been rolled out full of new merchandise that hasn't hit the shelves yet. So who knows what's in here, but I know I hit a thrift store at the right time when there are big bins right in front of the end caps. I can't wait to dig in. Okay, well, they had the pictures that I wanted. I'm so pleased. I picked up a few other things as well. Please excuse my hair, it's raining, and now my hair is having a party on my head. And now I am just stopping at Salvation Army where I swore I would never go again uh, because it just happened to be in the neighborhood of where I am and no harm in taking just a really quick peek. And then I need to get gas and head home. So let's go. shop I have a few other tips and strategies that I want to share with you and one of them is to be nice to the staff you never know when somebody at a thrift store is in a position to help you find something you're looking for maybe might bring something out of the back room for you might give you some other tip about a good time to come back or um, something that's about to be processed from the back or maybe helps you to the car with your bags it just takes a minute to be nice. A lot of people who work at Goodwill, like all retail workers, deal with people with strong personalities and they could really use a positive moment in their day. So it's great if you can provide that and it will help you too. Next, I'd say consider coupons and discount cards. Um, realize what day it is. A lot of thrift stores will have like a day where blue tag things are on sale or green tag things are on sale. Sometimes there's days where senior citizens get a discount. Um, I can tell you that at Goodwill and Savers, I have discount cards and I sometimes save 15 to 20%, sometimes 25% using those cards. And I also get a discount if I donate things to savers. So see where you might be able to set, save a little bit of extra money. It's always a good thing to do. My next tip is to use common sense before you shop. So what do I mean by that? Basically, I mean, make sure you've gone to the bathroom, you've had something to drink, you've had something to eat, you're not hungry, you're not tired, you're not in a negative mind space. Um, when you go to thrift stores, you know, it's not always a comfortable experience. Sometimes you've got to do some digging and some searching, and sometimes there are dressing rooms, sometimes there's not, sometimes Sometimes there's a restaurant nearby where you can grab something to eat. Sometimes there's not. So I would say the more comfortable you are, the more um, you're in a place where you can shop comfortably and with your full attention, the better off you'll be. My next tip is to educate yourself. And this is something that I am personally still working on. I am learning so much more about glassware, about collectibles, about identifying special markers. There is a ton of information out there. YouTube is my very favorite source for it. And by watching things like the Old Curiosity Shop and the Antiques Nomad, I have really increased my ability to pick out the good things that I might have missed if I hadn't taken the time to learn more. So I highly suggest that you do that if you're looking to make the most out of your thrifting experience. 
My last tip is to keep it in perspective. And what I mean by that is you may have a thrifting day where you don't find a single thing that you're interested in bringing home with you. You know, a thrift store is only as good as the most recent donations it's received. And sometimes the shelves are bare or a lot of customers have gotten there before you and you might find yourself empty handed. But don't be discouraged about thrifting in general because the next day you could go right after some fabulous things were donated and you might end up with a car full of gems. So if you have a day where not much happens, shrug your shoulders, move on, and look forward to your next thrifting trip and all the wonderful things that you may or may not find at that time. I hope these tips and strategies help you in your next thrifting adventures. I know I'm constantly learning more and it's a lot of fun to share my learning with you just as so many viewers share their learning and tips and strategies with me in the comments, which I really enjoy. So I think if we all work together to get a little bit smarter and savvier as shoppers, the better off we'll all be. So what I'm going to show you next is a bit of a two-parter, which I explained earlier, but to get started, the first time I went to Savers, I found this beautiful Lennox plate. It's a holiday plate. It's so, so pretty. These sell really well on eBay, so I think I'm going to get a nice return on this one. It's in perfect shape. It was only $3.99, and I really love Lennox pieces, so I was happy to find that. Really happy to find this one as well for $3.99. So this is another pretty Lennox piece. This is called Butterfly Meadow. So yeah, $3.99 for this, and I think this will do very well on eBay. This piece was a little bit more obscure and hard to find on eBay. It was only $1.99, but I thought it had a great retro pattern. It's called Carlton Ironstone Leilani. And I was able to find them on Etsy, not so much on eBay, but I figured for $1.99, I'd give that one a shot. I bought this little plate it says Tiffany on it, which is, I believe, the pattern. It's designed by Brunel, I believe. It was $3.99. Not a screaming deal, but a very pretty decorative plate. This is the kind of plate that was really meant to be displayed as part of a collection on a wall, which you don't see so much anymore, but it's still a very, very pretty decorative piece. I bought this pretty little picture. I went back and forth on this one. This was $5.99. I'm trying to show it to you without a glare. And so again, not a screaming deal, but such a pretty picture and such a nice little size to pop in a variety of places. Okay, this is really cute. I bought this little chick, just newly hatched in its shell. Isn't that so cute? This was $2.99, and there's no marking underneath, but I did find this on eBay. This was actually a two-piece set. So there was this one in the shell, and then it has a little friend that's just standing next to it. So the little friend is gone, and believe me, I went up and down the aisles looking for the little friend. But I did find this one, and I think this one is gonna be part of my own Easter collection. I picked up the Starbucks holiday mug that I will put um, on my Christmas or holiday sale in late November. That was just $1.99. It's in really good shape. And then I got this little vase that is so pretty. I love the blue and the swirls in it, the black stripes and the white flowers. I thought this was a really nice little vase. This was $4.49 and I wanna show you the marking. It's hand painted Yakahashmi Hasmi from San Francisco. I don't know, I will write it down for you in case you can't read it. I forgot I wasn't gonna read pieces anymore on camera because of the whole crazy old lady image I'm trying to shake off. So, uh, sorry, I'll have to remember. Don't try to read obscure writing on camera.
So the next day I went back to Savers because there were these two little pictures I hadn't bought the night before and they plagued me all night long. And so I wanted to go back and see if I could find them. Unfortunately, they were still there. So it's this little panda picture and it has a signature on it. I don't know if you can see that. And it's the um, frame is made to look like bamboo, although I don't think it is bamboo. This is the back, just completely bland. And then I bought this one to go with it. They're part of like a little set for the same price. So $5.99 each. And I was actually thinking they'd look really nice together like this, I think in the hallway that I just redid with wallpaper. So, and this one also has like a little like signed area, like an artist signature, which I, you know, I don't think is necessarily original or anything, but I love the colors. I'm not usually one um, to go in for like lots of just little critters, but lately they're calling to me more and more. I think it's maybe the effect Iris and Indy are having on me. Could be. Okay. While I was, of course, at Savers, I ended up buying more things than just the pictures because once I get looking, it's like a sickness takes over me. I don't know. But anyway, I found this cookie jar for $5.99. Oh, I don't think I have that on correctly. Let's try that again. There it is. It is a little barn with a silo. You can see little barn critters there and a tractor and the lid comes off and yeah, $5.99. I thought that was so incredibly cute. I really liked it. I bought these two mugs. They're very pretty. They have different fruit on them. So you can see the pears, the grapes, and the apples in this pretty rim. This looks like fading um, to the design, but actually that's part of the design, so that's intentional. These were made by Oneida, and here's the bottom, so you can see that. And it's annoying when the price stickers kind of block the um, maker's mark, but yeah, they're really pretty, so just two of those. I found this owl, this little bookend. Thought he was great, $9.99. And I thought, oh, he's so great. I might get him, should I get him? You know, bookends are a tough sell if there's only one. I'm sorry, Licorice is tap dancing all over the wooden floors. She only does this when I'm doing videos. And then I noticed a woman on the same aisle further down looking at the second one. And I thought, oh no, she's gonna pick up one. And she looked at me, she must have seen the frantic look on my face. And she goes, you take this one, you found yours first. And uh, I really appreciated that. So I actually got two for $9.99 and I think they're really excellent. So I was so glad to find those. So anyway, after I got that little stash, I ran some errands and then I popped into Salvation Army very quickly. I didn't have high hopes for finding things at Salvation Army because I have been frustrated there before, but I did get a couple of interesting things. I bought a set of five, I'm just showing you two right now, but there are five. Five of these little cups. This is depression glass in the Manhattan pattern. I have this or a version of this in pink that's really pretty that I used for um, Valentine's Day. But these are really nice. Um, like you can see, they're clear. They're all in really good condition. I was careful to really check all of the ridges because they're prone to chipping, but none of them were. So I ended up with five of these and they were $2.99 each, but then they were discounted. So I ended up getting them for half of that price. So a pretty good deal. Oh, I had told you that I had two of the fruit mugs. I just found a third one, so three. And then um, I bought this really pretty 
serving bowl. Isn't that really, really nice? And this is Anchor Hawking Fire King. I am gonna try to show that to you. I don't know if you can see that, but this was only $4, oops, $4.99, which I thought was a great price because I know at Savers, this would be at least $15, if not 20. So I was really glad to find that and I thought the price was awesome. And then I bought this Fire King um, piece as well. It's just a little plate with the pink flowers. And this one was only $1.99. I don't know if you can see the marking if I hold it up just right. Let's try it. Anyway, yeah, so um, when, I, when you come to think that I was expecting to find nothing and then I found all these things, yeah, it was a pretty good, pretty good haul. Um, I think that is everything. I'm just checking my bags. Nope, I lie. There's more. I bought these two very pretty plates. They would have been a set of four. And here's the back. It says Raymond Waits Cornucopia, certified international corporation made in China this pretty lattice work rim. I thought they were really nice. Obviously it would have been better to have all of them, but I thought these two were really nice. They were $2.99 for both. Oh, there are cats everywhere playing in the bags. Oh dear, this might get loud. Here's one. <laughs> I bought this pretty mug. This was $3.99. I think there's a little glare happening here. And um, this one is from the Southern Living Gallery. So I thought that was a nice piece. Oh, look at the bags. Andy, are you making a mess? Yeah, and licorice is tap dancing. And Iris is playing in the backs. It's a little bit of mayhem here. I bought this stack of bowls. This is actually considered to be dinerware. It's very kind of chunky, it has great colors. And on the back, you see that? It says Shandango, I believe. But anyway, these seem to resell pretty well. So you can see I have four of them and they were $2.99 each. I picked up this little mug with the horse theme on it for $1.99. It says handcrafted. That was cute. I bought these two pretty little vases with the hobnail glass. They were $2.49 each. They look very much like these little salt cellars or uh, candle holders that I have on my eBay store right now. So I thought those would fit right in. And when I saw this piece, my heart stopped. This is actually Weller pot pottery, which I've never had before. It reminds me a lot of Roseville pottery but it's different, it's a Weller. It's in really nice condition. Here's the mark on the bottom, Weller. Yeah, I thought that was fantastic. I love the handles. I'm gonna have a little trouble, I think, saying goodbye to this particular one. So anyway, you can see all the debris on the table. I've already put some things away I have a cat in a bin. I've got some papers on the floor. Here are some of the other things I've already shown you. There's a crazy tap dancing dog. Uh, yeah, lots of chaos as usual. So my plan is to spend the evening washing all of these things so I can then photograph them and list them on eBay. Um, tomorrow I need to spend most of the day cleaning the house. It's really chaotic. The two cleanouts that we recently did definitely added to the amount of stuff in the house. It's like enough to make this maximalist girl turn into a minimalist. It is a little bit stressful. 
So that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed seeing this haul. And if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. I want to thank you so much for being with me today. I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you next time.